she used to work at a nursing home. And she told me, uh, there's this old, I believe it was an old lady, but she was feeding her. And then she went like three times and she's like, how come this lady's not eating? Lady was dead. Yeah. Oh. And I was just like, and you're fine? She's like, yeah. I mean, I checked, she was cold. I looked at her eyes and she was like, gone. <laughs> What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Posted Podcast. I am the Postman. We got Mo Martinez, Brose, and Lo. And no brother Jose, no young Daniel, nothing. He ain't here, bro. That boy's sick. How that dare boy's he? sick. How dare right. he? Our good luck charm. So, on today's episode, I actually wanted to read a Reddit post. So, someone asked the question, Reddit, what is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? And in parentheses, they put serious. So someone responded with, um, a few years ago, I was walking through the woods off a beaten track a bit, and I smelt this really overpowering sweet smell. Being nosy, I pulled back the undergrowth to have a look and found a dead body. The guy had clearly been there for a while and wasn't looking great at all. He was all swollen and green with various runny bits. The local wildlife had also been dining well for a few days. So you got like wolves or something. Uh. Good for them. (laughs) (laughs) I called the police who told me to wait with the body until they arrived. Oh, (laughs) hell no. You got me fucked up. No. Mm -mm. I would have been like, nah, he's here. Um, Here's the dropped pin and it will, I'm sharing the location. I'm leaving. There you go. You can call me. This is my number. (laughs) Hell no. Being in the middle of nowhere, it took a while for them to arrive and it got dark and I was, and I just sat there in the dark with them for for a long time. I'm good. (laughs) I wouldn't know. No. I wouldn't have even, I would have left. Yeah. I wouldn't have even called anyone. I'd be like, nope. No, I would have called and I'm out. I no. found that shit. Here's a picture. I'm sending like, that's oh, my, ev- no. that's my evidence. I found it. You just I'm have left. that. Yep. No, fuck that. That picture in your phone. You see a ghost <laughs> next to the body. <laughs> so it turned out he had committed suicide. Oh. And so for a long time afterwards, I had dreams about him and he would talk to me. And not nice things. Oh. Mainly about how he was angry I had disturbed his resting place. And he wanted me to kill myself. No. Yeah, that's... I don't know. Probably just my imagination, but all pretty disturbing all all at the time. He still turns up in my dreams from time to time. And no doubt he'll be in his dreams again. Okay, yeah. That, to me, that's that's... The creepier part. Ugh. It's just... <clears throat> is everything after the fact? Yeah. And then talking Ugh. to him, like... Saying, yeah. I want you to... Want but you, you to- know what? In a sense, when somebody has an unfinished business, like, that's... That's pretty accurate. On the level of, like, what the fucking disturbing... It's more disturbing because you, you <clears throat> have to sit there and go through that. Yeah. But in a sense, like, bro, you... And mind you, we probably should put trigger warning. Um, you committed, or you un- you unalived yourself in this right. sense, and um, with that, <clears throat> somebody's gonna find you. You can't be upset. Like that was your choice, and unfortunately, like oh, ghosts, you're talking about the dead body. Yeah, and you know, spirits have unfinished business sometimes. And but if that was the case, like I don't know, I like honestly, like that's just mind boggling. Because it's it's hard to believe that maybe it's just his subconscious mind thinking of this, yeah. or that a spirit would actually linger to come back and haunt somebody like that. Because I do believe that spirits do come back if they unalive themselves like that, but not in an angry sense. It's more like they're just lost souls. Mm-hmm. And there's a gray space <clears throat> that you go when if, and you know, wh- whoever wants to believe this in the sense, because like, not everybody's going to believe this, but there's a level of forgiveness that we go through and judgment. And that, that can relate to like what, what you read in the Bible and biblical stuff. And to, to get to that 
next level of all right we're of peace i guess of light and peace you have to believe in something and believe in that higher power Mm -hmm. otherwise you stay in this gray zone in this gray space kind of lost and that's why we have quote-unquote hauntings Mm -hmm. but um yeah i don't know when somebody analyzes themselves like that i just feel like they're they're lost to begin with they either have to accept god in their sense to move on to another life Mm -hmm. or they're stuck yeah, there's, to me, what's creepy, is, like, say say you're at home, and you just see some person in your house. Every day. You know? No, but, like, so, someone you didn't know. <clears throat> yeah. Just, oh, I'm, Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. I mean, I've gotten very lucky that it's been people I've No, known. no, but, but, but I'm talking about, say it's an actual person. Yeah. Like, someone who... Who broke in is I don't know he's stealing or just or like how Jose you know or how Brose he he saw that old man so it's like just being a stranger that is enough to like make you you know just scary mm-hmm. it's it's already so just imagine you know him that just sat there with the body you know <laughs> the cops first told of him. all you wouldn't you couldn't catch me doing that like you're not gonna tell me to sit here yeah. and you take your sweet ass time to come find me and and he was no. in the middle of nowhere so they no, took thank a you. while hell to the nah i'm not I happy probably i probably would have dropped no you lie <laughs> <laughs> respectfully but i'm gonna respectfully no i have this thing where um my family knows it like when i see a dead a dead animal yeah, my legs tense like they freeze up like they go numb really what Even when driving? I'm driving, like, oh. it, it like shocks, right? It happened to you the other day. Yeah. I was, we were in the car together. Yeah, so we were, like ever since it started, I know when it started. It started when I was probably like 12, and I pulled a dead cat from under my aunt's truck. Oh, oh hell no. Like, it was nothing to me. I was like, oh, it's a dead cat. I'll grab it. So I grabbed it, put it in a bag. But ever since that day, like if I see a dead cat, a dog, or whatever, yeah. my legs just like freeze. Even like, like calambres, like on yeah. my legs. Yeah. Even like a squirrel, like even a squirrel, anything. Dog, like anything. Obviously, a bug and this shit ain't gonna get me, yeah. but like a dog, a cat, the furries, skunk, <laughs> the furries, yeah, a skunk, oh. raccoon, oh. a skunk. Kid. Look Lalo, at the hair yeah, of this Lalo, dog. Lalo, Lalo saw, that, saw that happen. Him. <laughs> um, we we heard a dog get killed on my street. Sadly, oh. I was in the car and I was just chilling because he he had gone inside to go get his brother. Oh, you heard it get killed? <laughs> they heard it get killed. Yeah. I was listening to music. I was in the car, so right. I didn't hear anything. Yeah. Um, I just saw a car like <clears throat> like kind of like through my peripherals and like the the side window or the side mirrors. Yeah. I saw the the truck go by. It was a white truck. I didn't see it though. Like oh, okay. I didn't see nothing happen. But I'm just on. I I looked up and then I looked back down. Yeah. Again, I'm in the car listening to music and I'm, excuse me, on my phone. They come out. We leave, and I, a whole ass dog just there. Like it. It wasn't like, it wasn't like splattered or anything. Nothing yeah. like that. Just but hurt. like you could tell, like it was. It was hit to the point where like it just. That's a chihuahua. It probably like yeah. immediate, oh. immediately passed away. But it didn't like burst or anything like that. It was oh. still like. Oh, 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 poor baby. <laughs> and so we're going, and so we're driving. And I'm like, bro, is that a Chihuahua? And then yeah. he was driving, and then he was just like, oh. <laughs> and then I felt the car do like one of these, and he was like, oh my god. He was like, my legs just tensed yeah. up. And it happens for like five seconds when I'm driving, but like if I'm walking, yeah, my legs are shot. Like, damn, it's just a weird feeling. To hurt, like. It, just, I hate it. It hurt my heart, bro. I, I immediately thought of my dogs, and I was just like, bro, I'm like, I'm hunting somebody down. Oh. I'm hunting that truck down. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a chicken. I'm not going to lie. When I heard the, the truck, like, he heard the, I thought he heard it was the squeal. a chicken. I heard oh, the squeal. Right? Like, yeah. the squeal, yeah. And I was like, oh, chicken, all right, pee, bro. Like, it just, <laughs> yeah. Like, I just saw oh, it, and then, and then we're driving. <laughs> the we have chickens like... on our streets, bro. <laughs> she did final call, bro. <clears throat> I think that might, I would say, um, that probably would change my perspective of, of life in a sense. Um, so like, yeah, see, like seeing somebody die or pass on that, I'm not going to lie. It's happened twice. And I have, I've had to witness that with family members, mind you. And, you know, it was all just, um, it was a process and we knew it was coming, but it was just, it's kind of just weird to have to like witness it. 
experiencing or seeing somebody kind of pass away, you kind of, um, it's almost like a light goes out and the time I was able to witness that. And, you know, my grandfather, he was the biggest person, the biggest influence on my life and not only mine, but other people in Redwood city, my family, just everybody adored him. And sadly when he passed away, it came, it came as a shock. We, we had a little bit of time to prepare, but not fully process it. So it was all happening really fast. And, um, I remember knowing the time and no, somewhat knowing the day that it was going to happen. And I just, I, I don't know what I did. I think at some point, like I shut off, like I shut down didn't really talk to anybody about it and processed it telling my mom by telling my mom. And, you know, she was like, okay, we didn't think twice about when the day actually came that it was going to be that day. Cause it can kind of like, I say it once and it goes out of my head and then it starts kind of all placing like I was able to kind of validate like, Oh, okay. That, well, yeah, it was kind of right. This was the numbers that I, that were repetitively going through my head. And then, so when everything was said and done and his time was, was up, he had passed. And I remember just going into the hallway cause something got my attention and I was like n- nose deep into a freaking book. Cause that was my biggest distraction was being able to disappear and go off into another world reading. And so I just, I don't know, something kind of clicked to me. I, I closed the book and I just started walking. But in that moment, my walking felt like slow motion. And I was, as I'm, as I'm walking, I could see myself walking through the corridors of the hospital. It's almost like I crossed paths with him. Mm-hmm. And as that was happening, I'm going into his hospital room at the same time, seeing my family just like devastated. Right. And it's a scene that nobody ever wants to remember, but this is something that'll play in my head often. And it's almost like my spirit was guiding me and I was just being pulled along, but I'm seeing myself walk and seeing myself cross paths with his spirit and just kind of looking at the same time and just kind of confusing like okay and then I walk into his hospital bed and then like the the flat line is there and then I could see my family just in tears and people who are, were praying over him as that as it was happening and just me catching I remember catching my cousin because she's just like buckled and so I don't know I feel like that's something that plays off and when somebody passes away I I, I do believe that you see that little that little light of something coming out of their Hello. breath yeah I'm like, oh, that's a very accurate depiction. But that you see that person, and their light kind of goes off, and they're just there, ashen. Einstein said something about like when someone passes away, uh, that it's an energy that leaves their body, yeah. and it has to go somewhere. Yeah, that it just doesn't disappear. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I, tra- I feel like we travel. Hmm. We travel in our sleep, and I don't think that it's any different that when you take your final sleep. Where are you going? Where do you want to go? McDonald's. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bruh. Not sponsored by McDonald's. Not, Not sponsored, sponsored by McDonald's. Sponsored by McDonald's. But I'm going. Dickie D's. <laughs> he said, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> now, what you said about, like, having that, like, uh, it almost feeling like a movie. Yeah. Like, I hella relate to that, because that's exactly how I felt when my grandma passed away. Like... I remember you telling me yeah. it's shit that I don't want to remember or mm-hmm. that I don't want to think about. But then every when you, but every now and then, and it's it's literally like you're watching a movie. Yeah. Like you remember it almost like from a third person point of view. Yeah, and like watching it pan out. You know what's nuts to me? It's um, even if I wasn't there when I know I hear somebody I'm very close to passes. Um, my cousin, may he rest in peace as well was brutally murdered in a sense like he that was just horrible the way his life kind of played out but he's he had always been just a little rough around the edges and beautiful soul beautiful spirit the way he was as a person just lovely to joke around with and be just make jokes with but at the end of the day like he made his choices unfortunately and the way that went down sucked but um you know we all found out because it, it was just so instantaneously that, you know, you don't get to say goodbye to somebody like that, especially when it was that horrific. Um, 
And who knows, this might be a trigger warning to somebody and I'm very sorry, but you know, death is very real. We all deal with it in different ways. And the more you accept and, and embrace it, the more it's, you find peace in it. Um, and with that, he, I dreamt about him like maybe one or two days after a day or two, like after he passed away. Yeah. And I remember wanting to tell him so many things. And I just looked at him and I said, it is so good to see you. Mm. And seeing him in white like my me my self-conscious like i'm a very lucid dreamer i knew like you are not really here you're just bidding farewell mm -hmm. and so and like i've mentioned before the way i communicate with um spirits even in dream realm we're not talking the way i'm talking to you guys it's a telepathy <laughs> thing it's like the umbilical cord is connected and that's how we're communicating without words being said but you know as thoughts transcribe into what you what you really mean to tell a person, um, I was able to tell him, you know, like, I'm sorry that I didn't get to really talk to you as much as I wanted to as the adults that we were because we had a great childhood. And even though he was a little shit, <laughs> I still, every time I would think about him, I would always think of the wonderful things we would all do together. Right. And so, you know, I he had apologized for something that he did. I won't really go into details of that. And I just looked at him and I'm saying, you know what, at this point, it doesn't even matter. Like what you did is what you did. Um, I forgive you so that you can find peace. I, you know, it's all love. And I remember giving him a hug and then the flower bloomed that was next to me and that I picked it and I woke up smelling roses. I had, I had a, <clears throat> a similar thing where I had a dream. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I mean, y'all know Raul Chavez. Yeah. Eric Chavez, Ralph. From Ralph's, Ralph's house. house. I miss you, Ralph. I hope you're watching the episodes. You better subscribe. Oh, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, Tell your friends. After he passed, um, I've, I had two dreams with him. Uh, but one of them, I knew that he wasn't, you know, yeah. like he was gone. He was passed. And, but I told him, it's good to see you. And he was just like happy to see me. And like, like I wish we talked a lot more than just. Yeah. Then what I, I don't know if we did talk more, it's just, it's just Which very you hazy. Can remember. What I could remember, yeah. but I just remember saying like, it's good to see you and just, and knowing that he was and you know, when I wake up, he's not really there, Right. but it was like nice to see him. Yeah. Ralph, I miss you. I'm about to cry right now. Oh <laughs> no, that's a beautiful thing. You should, you should always talk about stuff like that. I feel like, um, we all shut down. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I do too. I'm not the best with it. And I probably make a million jokes that are so fucking inappropriate but that's just me trying to cope with that's the pain yeah. Yeah. but you shouldn't ever stop talking about loved ones that have passed i feel like that that that's us keeping their memory along keeping it alive yeah. for those of you who never knew about ralph's house who don't know about raul chavez air chavez there is a link to a playlist to like 25 videos 25 episodes of a show called Ralph's House. Watch those and yeah, like you'll you'll see why. Like he's such a cool guy. He was friends with everyone. The chest slap ones are my favorite. There's two of those. <laughs> <laughs> we did the chest yeah. slapping they in real life. They get blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. And they just <laughs> that open chest you so fast, bro. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> yeah. Easy work, but uppercut, no problem. Just <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> back to the, back to the the uh, the dead body guy. Yeah, zombie basically. <gasps> um, my wife has a, a pretty crazy story Ooh. about. Uh, she used to work at a nursing home. Okay. And she told me uh, there's this old, I believe it was an old lady, but she was feeding her. And then she went like three times, and she's like, "How come this lady's not eating?" Lady was dead. Yeah. Oh. And I was just like, "And you're fine?" She's like, "Yeah." I mean, okay. I checked; she was cold. I looked at her eyes, and she was like, gone. And I was like, she, Wait, she, like she, in the middle she's of eating, feeding like a dead body. Yeah, like in the middle of eating, or just like no, she was she was already, she was already dead, dead, but dead. like it was she worked night shifts, so, like a little later. But every like person was different. Like the story she tells me about nursing home was just crazy. Like. One time there's a guy in a dark room naked, like calling for her or something like that. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Like the I, movie I believe Smart. that. Like scary movies, right? Basically. Yeah. Um, 
Man, yeah, she told me that, and I was like, I would not be able to handle that. Like, you know what? Power to the. Me. She's a nurse. <laughs> no, it's just a. She's she she's trying to do it. She was just. It was just a job at a. I don't want to say the name of the company. No, no, you don't have to. Yeah, but like, no power the to people that home, have right? to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Power to the people that have to do that because that that's a really hard that's job. Strong, bro. I'm too I sensitive. Do I yeah. can't do that. I'd be friends with everybody and then like. But you know what? The the sometimes, road, sometimes they need that. Like, do you know how many people have come across? Even like my grandma's in a home, and seeing the people that have helped her, you grow to like really care about these people because damn, their job is not easy. Oh, yeah. oh it's not. And my grandma's stubborn as hell, <laughs> but she she's got like she, the most love and and jokes for days, and she will talk sweet on anybody. But you cross her, she when she's pissed, she's pissed. Yes, so the fuck up. Man. But it's it's nice to see that there's people out there that have such a heart for that job because it is yeah. hard there's I people constantly yelling i can't do it yeah yeah first of all i'd be a big little you have to do like poop and yeah you gotta no, change diapers i can't do that bro. I, I have a friend who his mom like uh she worked as that but yeah. she had the night shift so all she all she, no all she had to do was was put him to sleep yeah my wife did that too yeah. right cool. and by permanently no 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 i no. <laughs> go on the bed um uh but the I guess the daughter of the lady, mm-hmm. like, kind of like said, "Why are we paying you for just you know?" And they're paying her like good, she, like she was like forty an hour. Oh my god! And she was there yeah. for like ten hours. Yeah. Cause she'd stay overnight. Yeah. Uh, but then they're like, "Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't need you anymore." Four hundred dollars oh. a day, bro. Yeah. I still wouldn't do it. Just to go night night. Just to say, all right, just time for bed, sleep. and just close the door. It's legit, it's legit babysitting. No, it's just adult sitting. Well, adult sitting. That movie with the old people. What's it? The, it's not called The Visit, right? What's it called? The Old? The Visit's a crazy movie. No, it is what's crazy it called? Movie. Oh, it's, it's the, called like these old. kids go to, to the beach? No. There's a new one. That's a good though. M. This Night Shyamalan. Uh, two kids go it's okay. Okay. to visit old people at a cabin or something like that. And that girl's like, oh, the visit. The basement. Yeah. Is it the, visit? the visit. That movie's oh. crazy, bro. Fuck that, bro. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I haven't seen that. Now, you don't want to take care of all the people after that, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you No, this. hey, watch it tonight. Yeah. Watch it tonight? Okay. Tonight. It's called The Visit. Oh, crazy. I might watch it, too. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm not watching that. Yeah, I'm not watching that again. Chilling yeah. with the body. Yeah, I don't know how my girl was able woods. to do that, bro. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I got 30 more seconds. Let me do one, one more. One more. Go, 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 go. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for watching another episode. <laughs> well, what? You got 10 seconds. Hurry up. <laughs> Who just squeaked? I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got 10 seconds. Thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of the Posted Podcast. I am the Postman. We got Mo Martinez, Brose, and Lo. Follow us on Instagram. Link in the bio. Peace out and stay posted. That was a good one. That was a good one.